Hello and welcome to The Arise interview where we take time to reflect on the big stories from the news and on the fortunes and affairs of the world in an hour of conversation with commentators, analysts and thought leaders. I'm Charles Anyagolu. Coming up in the next 60 minutes, disobedience of court orders remains a major problem in Nigeria and across Africa. And topping the list of those most likely to disregard court orders are those who should be the most strident defenders defenders of the law, senior government officials as well as the police and the army. It signals a trend that puts the rule of law, the dignity of courts and democracy under severe threat. As heads of state of ECOWAS, the Economic Community of West African States, hold an extraordinary summit this weekend, we ask when will African leaders who pledge to uphold democracy stop despoiling and blatantly disregarding the pronouncements of the temples of justice on the continent? We'll speak to one of Africa's most prominent human rights and constitutional lawyers and champion of the rule of law, the indefatigable Femi Falana. And later, as Nigeria struggles with various types of insecurity in the north of the country and beyond, how will its leadership and its law enforcement agencies solve the problem as it continues to grow and to fester across the region? We'll speak with an American expert on intelligence gathering and national security, transnational crime and law enforcement reform. Coming up. Now, ask any legal practitioner, constitutional expert or student of law and they'll tell you that disobeying a court order is not only a violation of the constitution but also a dereliction of public duty and a threat to the rule of law. In democratic societies in Europe, for instance, government officials who fail to comply with court orders are considered unfit to hold public office. Not in Africa, though. On the continent, the worst offenders are often those who are constitutionally charged with upholding and enforcing the rule of law. Senior government officials, including attorneys general, ministers, governors, law enforcement agents, and even presidents in some cases. The view seems to be that it is they who most often despoil the courts through their transgression and blatant disregard of judicial pronouncements. The foundation of our nation is the foundation built on the rule of law. And every public officer have their responsibility, individual and collective, to make sure that this country is built on the firm foundation of the rule of law. And I want to ask every public officer to ensure that they play their part in ensuring that there is respect for the rule of law in our nation. And even when we go to the realm of court orders, it is the responsibility of every public officer individually and as a government, the Jubilee Administration respects the rule of law and respects every court order issued by a competent court of law in Kenya. And we want to say categorically that any public officer who disobeys the law, who disobeys court orders, they will carry their cross individually. They will be held personally responsible for violating the law of violating any court order. The slide to anarchy and impunity will begin the day we don't respect the rule of law and we don't respect court orders in our country. Every citizen, every public officer, we have a duty as citizens of this nation to ensure that the foundation of the rule of law is not sabotaged by anybody, in any manner, anywhere. We must be clear. 
One man who knows a lot about court orders in Nigeria and beyond and who has consistently fought for justice is the human rights lawyer, constitutional expert and senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falana. And I'm delighted to say that Mr. Falana joins me now from Lagos. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr. Falana, for joining us. Uh, I understand it's a rather wobbly line that you're on, but I hope you can hear me and hopefully uh, the wisdom of your words will supersede the horror of the pictures that we're seeing on television at the moment. Um, let, let me begin by asking you this, uh, Mr. Falana. Um, I'm sure you've probably won cases at different courts where governments or agencies of government have subsequently refused to comply with court orders. Tell us about your experience in this regard. Well, uh, my experience has been very terrible uh, in this regard. Mm. You have big men and women in power who believe that they are above the law, and because of that, they have no respect for the rule of law. And because they have no respect for the rule of law, court orders are treated with contempt. Uh, in the case of Nigeria, uh, we have had very terrible experience whereby the courts order people to be released from illegal custody. And the government simply says, oh, uh, because of national security, we are unable to release them. And this is not, this is not encouraging at all. Unfortunately, other states in the sub-region are following the very bad example of Nigeria. Well, I mean, tell us how so, because I mean, I understand that, for example, um, the the ECOWAS court and some of the, uh, the, the orders that they give uh, are often not obeyed at all by, by countries in the sub-region. Well, um, unfortunately, you know, uh, with the one we are dealing with right now has to do with Kevat, a member state of the ECOWAS, uh, that has simply ignored uh, the orders made by the court on the 2nd of December i.e. that Mr. Alex Saab, a diplomat, uh, a national of Venezuela, uh, who made a brief stopover in, in Kivad while he was on his way to Iran, and the court made orders that uh, he should be released from prison, put in a house arrest, and his doctors and family members and lawyers be allowed to visit him. The government of Kivad has uh, willfully displayed the Order. On the untenable ground, oh, we didn't sign the uh, protocol, supplementary protocol of the ECOA, but the court has already ruled that as jurisdiction to hear the case, it has dismissed the objection of Kevad. Yet, Kevad has not been called to, the, to order by the by the authority of first of state we've already filed an application before the court that sanctions be imposed on kevat because it cannot justify its action we right now we have a member a national of kevat sitting on the bench of the court we have had one before her sitting in the court i mean that sat in the court so it is totally unacceptable for Kevat to say, oh, because we didn't sign uh, one of the instruments, we are not going to be banned by the orders of the court. And we want to make an example this time around, so that the case of Kevat will serve as a deterrent to others, uh, other member states of, of, of the ECOWAS. Let's take a break. You're watching The Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead, including an American expert on intelligence gathering, national security, transnational crime and law enforcement reform shares his considerable experience. And you're watching the Arise interview. Uh, as you know, we've had some technical problems trying to communicate with my guest, uh, my first guest, who is, of course, the human rights lawyer, constitutional expert and senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falana. We've had a major challenge in getting his picture up, but I, I understand we've got his audio. 
and uh, he's an important man. The things he has to say, very, very uh, crucial. So let's try and speak to him via the audio line. Uh, Mr. Falana, thank you very much indeed for staying with us and uh, sorry to have put you through conniptions, as it were, trying to get your video line up and going. But let's thank, attempt thank the audio line. And before we went on break, we were talking about the problem of uh, the obedience of court orders uh, in Nigeria and beyond. You gave us the example of uh, Cape Verde um, not obeying the, the orders from the ECOWAS court, that's the Economic Community of West African States, and you also cited the issue of Nigeria. What I'd like to ask you is why is it that government officials and the executive branch who are supposed to enforce the law um, are often unwilling or unable to comply with court orders. Well, uh, this has to do with the fact that sanctions are not meted out to public officers who disregard court orders. Uh, but uh, as I said, in the case of Kevad, we want to make an example. We want to show that the continent, I mean, uh, the subregion has opted for the rule of law. And therefore, every member state of the ECOWA must go to the rule of law. And that is why we are going to insist that the orders of the court in respect of Mr. Lex Saab be obeyed. I mean, this is a diplomat who cannot be detained in any country where there is rule of law. Assuming a mistake was made, it has been corrected by the ECOWAS court. The ECOWAS court has insisted that you must put this man in a house arrest. You must allow his doctors to treat him. These orders have been disregarded. And we have already filed an application before the ECOWAS court to invoke Article 24 of, of, of the supplementary protocol of the court by imposing sanctions on Kevad for disobeying the orders of the court. Well, I mean, I'm not sure what the response has been to, to that. But the other thing I was going to ask you about, because obviously at the outset you talked about not just the ECOWAS court, which is a regional court, but also the courts in the local domestic courts in, in different countries, including Nigeria, where we are, and which is, of course, your country. I mean, in, in circumstances where the government or whatever agency refuses to um, obey the law uh, and you having written presumably countless letters to the offending agencies of government without success what do you then do i mean head back to the courts to make an application of mandamus knowing full well that such you know a command will probably not be carried out well, well uh, in the case of ECOWAS, what has been done by the, uh, uh, the authority of the heads of state and other organs is to appreciate this very dangerous dilemma and make appropriate recommendation, and which was accepted by all and sundry, that where the orders of the court are disobeyed, uh, uh, the authority of heads of state will be imposed, I mean, will be ordered by the court to impose sanctions. I mean, it's like you have a coup, uh, and, and that has been done. I mean, the countries have been suspended. Otherwise, the courts are going to be rendered increasingly useless, and there can be no basis for that in any civilized society. That is why we want to make an example of Kedvar this time around. Right, uh, we, we lost you a little bit there. We lost the signal briefly, but we got the gist of what you're saying. But what then happens in cases um, inside uh, countries like Nigeria where the government decides it's not going to obey a court order? I mean, how do you get them to do it? Well, in the case of Nigeria, we have succeeded wherever the government has said we're not going to obey court orders, we have taken appropriate steps under the law. And the last experience has to do with the case of Chiwara and his colleague, Mr. Bakari, when the government said we're not going to obey the orders of court, the state security service, I simply filed contempt proceedings. And that was why the government turned around to say we are releasing them. Not only were the two of them released, Colonel uh, uh, Sambo Dasuki, who had been detained for four years based on that 
moved to jail the director general of the state security service, the government had to release him as well. And that is how to operate under the rule of law. Right. Uh, well, what about the case of, of people like the, the, the leader of the Islamic movement of Nigeria, Sheikh Ibrahim El Zaki, who at, at different times, I, 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 I believe, was freed by the courts, but was still in, in custody? Well, it was, it was freed by the federal high court. But when the government could no longer justify the disobedience of the court order, uh, 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 some criminal charge had to be filed against him and his wife in the high court of Kaduna State. So, uh, uh, legally speaking today, they are on remand on the orders of the, the, the high court in Kaduna State. In the particular case on hand, Keva has not been able to justify the disobedience of the orders of the echo was court. Other than to say, oh, we didn't sign, but that same protocol provides that once it is signed by heads of state of nine member states, the, 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 the protocol shall come into force. In this particular instance, 14 of them signed the protocol, except Kevat, whose prime minister to dash out of the meeting to attend to an urgent uh, program at home. But since that supplementary protocol was uh, uh, ratified in 2005, Kevad has attended all meetings, has taken part in all decisions affecting the court, including fielding candidates to be members of the court, including the fact that uh, the Chief Justice of Kevad is a member of the council, Judicial Council of the community, just like other uh, Chief Justices. So it is unacceptable for Kevad to say that it's not going to comply with the order of or orders of court on uh, Mr. Lesab, who is not only a special envoy of his country, but who has now become an alternate ambassador to the African Union. It is permitted. Right, uh, we, we've lost uh, Mr. Falana again, but um, uh, it's, it's just been an absolute challenge uh, trying to get through to him. Um, he is in, in Lagos, of course, where there's uh, a, a lot of people and uh, a lot of hustle and bustle, and he's just coming out of court. So um, I expect that's probably part of the, the challenge of, um, challenge of trying to get through to him. I, I, I'm being... I'm being told that you're, you're back now, uh, Mr. Uh, yeah. Falana. I, I just wanted to ask yeah. you that um, looking at countries like Nigeria, looking at the ECOWAS court that you were talking about, um, have things improved at all over the years since Nigeria, for example, returned to democracy in 1999? Are things getting better or worse as far as obeying court orders are concerned? Well, at the level of uh, a country like Nigeria, uh, the law is very clear on obedience of court orders. And I have, I, I have, I've, I've, I've appealed to my colleagues, lawyers who are involved, don't go out complaining that orders of court are not obeyed. Take appropriate steps under the law by filing content proceedings against officials that are involved. And this has worked over the years even under the Buhari regime. With respect to the sub-region, uh, only a couple of countries um, have disobeyed orders of the ECOWAS court in recent time. Majority of the members respect the orders of the court, respect the judgments of the court. And luckily, uh, the current chair of the, of the ECOWAS uh, community, uh, uh, as of state, the, the authority of self state, uh, President Anna Akufado, you know, uh, a former attorney general of his country, has continued to insist that his colleagues must ensure that the orders of the court are obeyed. And this time around, we are also appealing to him to impress on Kevad to follow civilized standards by obeying all the orders of the ECOWAS court on, on, on Mr. Alessar. 
I, I was going to ask you um, whether it's more difficult to enforce judgments of the ECOWAS court, for instance, as opposed to the judgments of domestic courts, because, of, because ECOWAS is, to some extent, there's, a, there's an element of statelessness there, or a pan-state nature, and, and lack of a clearly identified law enforcement agency. Well, uh, clearly, uh, it is easier to enforce judgments of domestic courts, but where we are also getting to, and this has just happened in a case against the ECOWAS Commission, uh, it, is, it should be possible for a judgment creditor from the court or anybody who has obtained an order of the court to register same or the judgment of the court, register it as a foreign judgment in your country <coughs> and then enforce it. A Nigeria has just succeeded in enforcing a judgment of the court by to register uh, the account of the Equus Commission was garnished, and the man, the, 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 the judgment creditor, has collected a substantial part of his money. And so that is what we are also advocating should be the order of the day. If you have judgments of the court, you should be able to register it in your country and then enforce like a domestic judgment, a judgment of a domestic court. Okay, uh, Femi Falana, I want to thank you very much indeed for joining us. In spite of the enormous technical challenges, we were able to glean from the things you said, um, the, the points that you were, you were trying to communicate, and we appreciate that. Femi Falana, the human rights lawyer, constitutional expert and senior advocate of Nigeria. You're watching the Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead, including that American expert I spoke about on intelligence gathering, national security trans national crime and law enforcement reform shares his considerable experience. Stay with us.